Welcome to the Independent Republic of Mike Graham. Prime Minister's questions a little bit later on as well. I'd almost forgotten about that. Rishi Sunak and uh, Keir Starmer with their weekly sort of dance of uh, the macabre, trying to make points against each other. Uh, meanwhile, we all sit here and suffer in silence. But let's mm. try not to suffer in silence. William Clouston is here from the Social Democratic Party. William, very good morning to you. Good to be here. Um, we don't like to suffer in silence, you and I. No, um, so, so well, we don't, do we? So, and we don't suffer in silence, no. but a lot of people sort of have to. Mm. But imagine if you are a shop owner in this country uh, in 2023, uh, it's September the 13th, and here you are wondering whether today is going to be the day mm. that somebody comes into your shop and either ruins you, mm. ruins the shop, or ends up hurting somebody in quite a bad way. Mm. It's, it's this uh, epidemic of lawlessness and um, shoplifting is, is out of control. Mm. Certain categories of crime. Totally. Crime in, in the big cities are illegal. Yeah. If you look at the clean-up rates for things like bicycle theft, less than 1%. Nothing. Mm. It's, it's basically legal. Right. Uh, the shoplifting thing is, is it's like a, a post-pandemic explosion, if you look at the figures. It may, may be to do with data collection mm. to some extent, but... The large retailers even are saying that it's so bad that it affects the viability of, of, of major stores. Yeah. Can't Primark. Right. Talking about, you know, people walking out with goods to the value of £250, mm. just walking out. And it's because the, the basic cause is that the criminal knows that very little will happen. Very little. The criminals are emboldened. They mm. feel able to walk into someone's premises and loot it. Some of the videos uh, looting drinks from, say, the co-op stores yeah. in South London. They're very brazen. Bra it's totally brazen. Yeah. And they don't even bother to hide mm. their faces because they know very, very little is going to happen. Right. So, yeah. So, I mean, it's, so, so it's the ineffectiveness mm. not only of, of the security people there, because mm. the limits of what they are willing to do to put their own lives on the line, because mm. some of them have been stabbed. Mm. Um, the limitations of CCTV, because you can film people doing stuff, mm. but if you don't find them or punish them, they don't care. You've got to, find, you've got to punish them. They've, mm. got to, they've got to feel it's a calculation of crime. Isn't yeah. it? It's a calculation. Will I get away with it? And obviously this incident in Peckham, I want to talk generally rather than about this particular case, right. but the, you know, if you're a, a small shop owner in a local area and you're getting looted or mm. people walk out with goods they haven't paid for, what do you do? You, you, you might not be trained, you're not trained to apprehend people, yeah. you haven't received no training, you're just trying to protect your business. Right. And then of course it's a spark and there's a sort of intercommunal aspect mm. of conflict here and I'm very worried about that. When I was uh, younger, when I was a student in Birmingham, I lived in Handsworth the first yeah. year I was there. And uh, I lived there for a year and then I moved to North Birmingham. But um, in the year that I was there, there was a spark mm. on Lazelle's Road. A man was arrested, ended up in a, an orgy of, of rioting and violence. And sadly, two brothers were burnt alive mm. in a post office. Right. And that's that, I, it's always remained with me. Yeah. Uh, I senseless was, uh, violence. Senseless violence. Yeah. Tragedy. And I, I, it was my post office. Mm. I used it. It was very sad. I think you've got to be very careful with this. Make sure it doesn't uh, uh, escalate. And please leave these things to the police. Mm. You know, the police will go through uh, an incident like this. They will, but uh, on the other hand, you know, at the <coughs> time, and we've got the um, the video footage of two incidents which we can show you now. One is the initial incident of um, the woman, basically. The story seems to be that she wanted a refund for something that she'd bought. Yeah. They said, we can't give you a refund, but you can have goods to the same value. She then went round the shop and basically grabbed loads and loads of stuff, mm. making out that she... Uh, this is actually the second video. This is mm. her um, trying to leave the shop with loads mm. of stuff, and this is him trying to restrain her. He's been accused, the shop owner, of being a little bit over the top. Mm. But there's an earlier piece of footage where it shows her actually attacking him, mm. where she would appear to be hitting him yeah. with some kind of implement uh, as he tries to restrain her further. Yeah. And so the situation is that he's trying to call the police. The police aren't there. Mm. So you're, you're right to say but He's that, in a terrible dilemma, Mike, because yeah. what does he do? Does He he can't let if, her leave if, with the if, stuff, right? Yeah, does he just watch people? What word gets round that you can go to the store and just take things? Yeah. So you can't have that. As I say, I would, I would, I would, people need to be calm. The trouble is in the, the in the era of social media, things can get whipped up very, very quickly, mm. and everyone takes sides. And you yeah. notice on the on the sewer that is Twitter, people have been taking sides, uh, yeah. uh, you know, according to racial uh, allegiance. Well, of course they have. Yeah, it's like AJ Simpson he's, again. He's racist. Yeah. He's, he hands off black women. Can we see the other video? There's a video mm. where she is attacking him, which we haven't seen yet. Uh, which yeah. there is as well, which is at the beginning, the first instance, here it is here. This is where she basically starts attacking him, 
you know, and she's hitting him repeatedly, and he's not responding. He's just trying to shield himself from it. Yeah, and so that's the context as well, which Twitter often misses. It all, and then people clip tweets, yeah. don't they? Clip um, footage to suit their own agenda. Yeah, and then you, you know, you, you end up with a, a, a large protest outside the store. Yeah, and it all escalates. Just please, well, suddenly they were producing placards. Yeah, and you but go, well, where did the placards come from? Lead to the police. From? Lead yeah. to the police. The police are the side uh, whether the person was guilty of taking things out right. without uh, asking. They'll decide whether the shop owner acted disproportionately. But poor old shop owners are in a real... But what's he going to do cuts. today? Are you going to open the shop and wait for the backlash? Are you going to wait and see? We're mm. going to show you another video now, uh, <clears> which is actually a different shop uh, in a different part of south-east London. Uh, this is in a place called Woolwich, apparently. Mm. And check this out, right? This is a, a sort of mob scene of people coming into a shop attacking the people that run the shop it's a horrible thing to watch so we would ask you if you're you know uh, of a nervous disposition you should look away now but there's people punching each other kicking each other uh, the people in the shop trying to defend themselves meanwhile there are other people just lifting stuff off the shelves and putting it under their jumpers and walking out what, with it. what are we going to become what like is this what are we going to become like imagine it, if you're even in a shop with one of your kids or something in the united states uh they're armed shop owners are armed and regularly you'll see people trying to hold shops up and getting mm. shot and that's the sort of chaos that you've got there yeah yet in other parts of the world you know uh south korea for instance uh shops don't even have attendance right. it's honesty yeah you know, i've just spent two and a half weeks in, in orkney on mm. holiday right and there are honesty stores all over the island right. there's a there's a bakery quite close to us it's just honestly walk in we buy take stuff we and like, leave the money just leave it in the box right. and that's a high trust society yes. and i worry we're becoming a very low trust disorderly society but it's not just about trust it's about opportunism isn't it it's about people who want to have no rules who mm. don't care mm. i mean these are the very people who by the way would be the ones who suffered if it was a survival of the fittest because they haven't got any money mm. a lot of them mm. uh, and they would be the ones that would actually be left destitute on the street yeah and if you wanted to go into some kind of mad max you yeah, know and, and you know futuristic world where mm. only people who could afford to have armored cars could might drive on right. the road yeah. and only people could afford an ak-47 uh, you know what i mean yeah but that would be the situation but that's what that's what some of us worry that we're heading to you know yeah. gated communities disorderly yeah. contract the public realm is becoming i mean it starts literally you can see it you can see when you go into a town or a city you can see if it's looked after you can mm. see if it's orderly yeah uh, you know the half i've moaned for years about the fact that half of our towns and cities smell of skunk yeah you know they it didn't used to be well like if you that. go down to peckham i've driven through peckham on many occasions i don't spend yeah. a lot of time down there but i have been there mm. you know it's quite a vibrant community mm. um but it's a very different place at night than it is during the day. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I bet you. And and so parts of you know lots of our cities are like that. Mm. Where I would my daughter when she was living in London would, would had friends who lived in Peckham. She would go there, but I would urge her never to spend too much time there at night, because getting back from somewhere like that um, is not an easy thing to do. I, I had a family member that lived there briefly mm. in a couple of months. Heard gunshots. Yeah. You know this is becoming. It's not. An, it's not a rare no. thing anymore. No. And it's not a rare thing to see somebody with a gun. Yeah. And it's certainly not a rare thing to see somebody with a machete. But once, once, once the authorities lose control of the of the public realm, mm. the streets, the shops, when this starts, it's very difficult to see how it doesn't get worse. Mm. And that's the trouble. So I, you know, law and order is going to be a massive thing at the next election, Mike. Totally a massive thing. You because know, people... all of it has gone from the beginning of the arrest process through to yeah. um, the police stations all being shut down, yeah. through to uh, the CPS being Standard, not fit for purpose, right? Yeah. through to not enough courtroom uh, space. Because Rainbow laces. Loads of courtrooms yeah. have been shut down. Yeah. And that was before they discovered they all had yeah. aerated concrete in them. Yeah. You know, So, you know, people turning up on seven police officers turning up on your door because you made a tweet that they didn't like. That's the crazy That's world we're living in. And yet this is this sort of thing's happening. Yeah. Um, Andy in Blackpool says this. In relation to the Peckham shop incident, people seem to forget every person in this country can use reasonable proportion and necessary force under common law to defend themselves. Also, Section 3 of the Criminal Law Act and the Prevention of Crime. Grabbing around the neck can be reasonable. It is a case-by-case -case basis and the honest held belief of the person using the force if they felt that that was the only way. Only a court can say if the force was reasonable, not the court of public opinion. Well, that's true. Um, but that doesn't solve the immediate problem. And I would imagine that this morning the police are going to be out in force in yeah. Peckham, um, which you might say is another waste of their resources when they well, could I be read, actually tracking proper criminals. I read the pieces, Mike, and you can imagine what the BBC and The Guardian wrote on this. They oh, took yeah. a, a certain angle, which I, just don't, I don't, don't think reflected facts. 
Uh, but well, well, they're, not, they're not keen on facts, in the, <laughs> the BBC. No, they the just Guardian. took such a, a ridiculous angle. What does the guy do? He's not trained. He no. Say, he's not, he's also, just trying to protect the shop. That yeah. he's protecting. Yeah. Right? Simple. Um, William Cluston is here. We're going to talk some more about law and order, but also some more uh, about the migrant crisis, which has also got to do with law and order. Uh, we've also got to talk about the uh, current summit going on between uh, Kim Jong-un and Vladimir Putin. I mean, make of that what you will. This is Talk TV. Welcome back to the Independent Republican, Mike Graham, right here on Talk TV. Quite an unusual event happening as we speak, and that is a summit meeting, which we uh, we uh, sort of propagated a couple of weeks ago. Uh, some people weren't sure if it would happen, but Kim Jong Un, uh, the leader of North Korea, uh, has got himself onto a um, bulletproof train and travelled to meet with Vladimir Putin uh, in Russia, uh, where they're apparently discussing the possibility of selling arms one way or another uh, from North Korea, I think, to Russia. But before we get to that, we've got some pictures we think of it as as well, actually, as we speak. Uh, let's talk, shall we, uh, William, William Cluston is here, about Labour's new uh, appointment, Shadow Culture and Sports Secretary. Um, who's in the job? Thangham Debonair. Mm. Yeah, Bristol Great West. Name. Bristol West MP. Bristol West MP. Uh, she's not particularly mm. qualified to be um, Shadow Culture and Sports Secretary, is she? No, I'm sure she's a nice lady, but this, it's a curious one because it's, it reminded me of the Bra Barbara Castle story in the 60s. I, mean, ah. I, was, I wasn't around to watch it really but uh, yeah she she was a transport secretary that couldn't drive and yes. made a great big fuss about it but this is this is quite strange you want to be sports secretary effectively yeah. and you've you've been in Bristol West for the best part of 10 years since uh, 2015 yes and it's never occurred to you to go to see Bristol Rovers or Bristol City or right. go to the rugby. Right. You've never. You've doesn't never this, gone. But this puts in a microcosm, doesn't it? Some mm. some of the problems that our political <coughs> elites have, which is that they don't really get what everybody else does on no. mass. No. They don't understand. I mean, in a way, Barbara Castle not driving doesn't preclude her from being transport secretary. No. So much of that no. is about public you know transport. public transport, yeah. but also other forms of transportation. And she's probably been in a car. Yeah, so, and she was a towering politician, yeah. one of my favourite Labour I uh, think she was brilliant. Giants. But to have yeah. been so uh, lax in even just going to any kind of sporting really, event... Really weird. It's just ridiculous. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a strange thing uh, to admit, really. It also is slightly strange. I think Bristol West is up, up the hill, isn't it? It's Clifton and the I University. guess it would be, yeah. So it, doesn't, it maybe doesn't uh, cover the, the grounds, but it is it Ashton is startling. Gates and all that. Yeah. Well, it's not a very big city. No. No, it's surprising that you've never had an invitation. Yeah. You'd think the MP would get an invitation. or I don't know whether she was at the England-Scotland game last night up well, in Scotland. Couldn't have been. Um, been. But yeah. one of the most fantastic moments of it, because there, there was a bit of, you know, you and I share a sort of Scottish uh, yes. heritage. Yeah. So Scottish. I always support Scotland against England, yeah. um, no matter what happens. Yeah. And, of course, uh, as Kevin O'Sullivan said, um, England were magnificent. All four goals were great, <laughs> particularly uh, Harry Maguire's when he stuck it in his own net. Yes. Um, but... The only thing that, that sort of united the fans mm. was when the cameras panned in on uh, Gianni Infantino yes. from FIFA. And yes. everybody just started booing. Yes, re uh, yes. <laughs> the, the uh, origin of rectitude and yes. goodness. All Absolutely. goodness. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, international <clears throat> matters. Uh, we've got a situation currently where uh, Kim Jong-un and uh, Vladimir Putin are meeting. It would appear that... Uh, uh, they're kind of trying to form some kind of alliance against the West mm. and the evil, horrible, nasty, you know, mm. hegemony types uh, who, who are trying to do away with both countries. Mm. And um, people said he wouldn't do it. But there he is. You can see him walking down the steps of his bulletproof train mm. uh, to meet up with, uh, with Vladimir Putin. I mean, it's all for show, this, in a way, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. <clears throat> in theory, it makes sense. The rate of depletion of ordnance, yeah. missiles and uh, weaponry generally, um, Russia's mode of operation in warfare is, is bombardment, basically. Yeah. And uh, they've been throwing everything at it. So they have they had a problem. You know, they, they, and certainly the, on the Ukrainian side, it's much more acute because the West has supplied them with uh, not as much. So mm. they have to be very, very careful what they use, yeah. when they use it. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Maybe just a. Uh, it strikes me as probably a PR thing. Uh, is it? A, does Russia really need North Korean weaponry? How old is the weaponry? Well, I mean, according to some people <coughs> who know these things, they do because yeah. they're running through their weaponry at a rate of knots. Yes, yeah, and, and, and an awful lot of the Russian um, sort of armory is quite old. Yes, uh, much of it, particularly the tanks, mm. um, are. I mean, I can't imagine that, that North Korea's got more modern warfare. 
than the Russians do. I don't think so. Um, but again, it's one of those Russian PR jobs where people mm. will ask the question and nobody really knows for sure the answer. They're meeting apparently in a place called uh, Vostochny, mm. uh, the Cosmodrome. Space Centre. Uh, yeah. In Russia's Far East. Yeah, I mean, it, the trade, pe people do trade uh, when, if and only when, they, they both sides are, end up better off. So in theory, I, mean, this, I think it was in the Times they were speculating on a sort of three-way mm. uh, engagement, really, where uh, the North Koreans se send the Russians mm. ordnance and some military hardware, and the Russians provide nuclear uh, sub technology and satellite technology. And, satellite technology, and then, yeah. and then the, the North Koreans, with the money, with the resources, replace some of their weaponry uh, by the yeah. Chinese, because the Chinese are not keen on uh, going over the top and being completely. Uh, open in their support for Russia. You know, right. they, they've, they've had summits, haven't no, they? No, because they, for them it's all about positioning themselves so that they can do whatever they wish to do without yeah. having to be loyal to one side or the other. Yeah. But what's your policy as a party on, for example, the, the war in Ukraine? Ukraine? Well, we con condemned it. I mean, Ukraine is a, a, is a sovereign nation, it's a nation state, and it's, it's fighting a war of, of justification. It's trying to... But uh, we've always taken quite a realistic, probably a more realistic view, not quite as far as Peter Hitchens, but a, a, a realistic view on, on what the prospects mm. were. I mean, I, I, one of the things we flagged up in the original press release when the war started was that I thought that Western leaders uh, were all um, making the mistake of underestimating the effect of counter sanctions on the West. Mm. Now, if you, look, if you value it on, in GDP, there's no doubt at all that the sanctions have hurt the EU and the West to a greater extent than for the Russian economy. Yeah. The Russian economy, interestingly, last year uh, was much more resilient than people thought. Um, so, yeah, I, I think... And, and then, well, because they're less reliant on things like um, uh, other countries for energy. Yes. Because they've got their own. And, yeah, they're, they're a full-spectrum uh, e energy and um, commodity superpower. I think we just, we, we're a little bit insular. If you read the, if you looked at the reports in the West, it's what we do to them, we're going to teach them a lesson. Yeah. Okay, yeah, but the, there's deindustrialization happening now mm. in uh, Europe's biggest economy in Germany. Without Russian gas, that's a very, very severe adaptation for them. So I think, I don't think Western leaders were honest about that from the start. Um, I also, I mean, I, 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 as I say, I think the Ukrainians are entirely, this is a, a war that's entirely justified for them. They should try and remove Russia entirely from their uh, territory. But, Mike, do you really believe they will? No. You, no. No, I don't think anybody does. No. Well, I think, no, well, some, some Western politicians have talked about total victory, which is, from an, in an ideal world, is, is, is ideal. Yes, you'd get Russia out of all of your territory, yeah. including Crimea. Who's going to make that happen? Well, they didn't I mean, make it happen in 2014, realistic. did they? No. So why would they suddenly make it happen in no, 2024? You, most, most wars... I was worried about, from the start, I was worried about partition, partly because um, partition historically is so common. I mean, people, it doesn't occur to people, uh, you know, Ireland, <clears throat> um, Germany, Cyprus, mm. North Korea, Vietnam. Partition is actually very, very common. I, it's not desirable, it's not ideal, it would be a, a terrible event for, for Ukraine, but... You've got this boundary now, you, and and this. But it brings hostilities to an end. And <coughs> it does. It stops killing people. Yeah. Talks all the time about you know surely it's better to stop people killing each other, isn't it? Yeah, but there are there are there are just wars, Mike, as well. You know, that, so I, I I can see it from both sides there. I think. I mean, I I, I I've never as a politician supported the uh, crazy interventions the West has done. I've been consistent I and mean, I'm not I'm not changing my mind it's not about been that. terribly successful it's been di absolutely disastrous with the wars of intervention the wars of choice in Iraq mm. and uh, Afghanistan it it strike it always struck me as insane trying to um trying to impose sort of western democracy in a country like well it's such a tautology isn't it ridiculous how can you impose democracy by you force can't. <coughs> they spent, it doesn't work no and you spent 20 years doing it so I, I you know I, I my default position is you know uh the the war that is totally justified as a war of self-defence, which which Ukraine is fighting, but I I'm not going to kid myself that you can pretend that that Russia is going to be beaten in this war. 
um, militarily. I, I'm very sceptical about, yeah, about that. I think it may well be going on for quite some time. Uh, William, good to talk to you. Thank you very much Great. indeed. William Clouston, leader of the Social Democratic Party. A bit of breaking news here. BP apparently is planning to invest up to 10 billion euros, they say today, in low carbon fuels, renewables and EV, that's uh, electric vehicle charging in Germany by the end of the decade. And we'll bring you more on that uh, as to why they're moving away from fossil fuels and more uh, into what they call renewable uh, stuff. Who knows if that's going to work? Uh, we shall see.